This conference will now be recorded. Okay, maybe uh, we will take uh, so near to the end of this uh, session, and uh, you can start sharing your screen, and uh, we will uh, sort it out. Okay. <clears throat> can we do this um, first? First thing done because I am really stuck. Okay. And I'm not sure uh -huh. how many others, uh, you know, are in the same situation except I think Prasad. He he he, he tried to do it, and I think he completed it, but I'm not sure others. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, no. Uh, okay. Yeah. Keep going further so, and further. If you are not able to do it, what's the point doing it? You see okay, where I'm coming right, from. Right. Okay. So did you try the second two option? And okay, I'll I'll make you the presenter. Uh, okay, you can start share your screen. Thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. So there are three. Uh, um, hold on. Can I just yeah, move? three master and uh, yes, three data. three masters. So one, two, and three masters, and there are three okay. data nodes. One, two, and three. Okay. And effectively, if you see that um, I have created a notepad with uh, you know um, yeah, whatever you you uh, you know the the instructions you have given in the mm -hmm. um, during the video. So I have got noted down everything, and that's what I followed one by one to do it. The first time I did the cluster, second time as well. So the pro um, so the problem I'm facing. So let's go back to the the screen, which is master node. If I put the username and password, I got the same screen as you were. Yeah, you know, uh, I could see. Okay. So. When I go further from here, okay. So currently managed. Uh, what was the host? Just hit there. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there might be something misconfiguration. I'll. I'll. Uh, Can you take the a control? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll. Okay. And uh, so you are able to get the master. So. Here, so it's in it's a multi uh, you know execution mode. So you can take take it off if you want. That's the you, okay. if you want to yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, so these are the hosts, right? So master one and uh, so this is the master host name. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so here it's a definitely. So uh, the service is running, and we will go to the master two and uh, check system CTL uh, status Cloudera. Okay, so we will check that. Should I run the same command on others? Can you check it is a host file in our remaining nodes? No, first I uh, will check. Okay, so this is fine. And uh, okay. Should I do it for you? Yeah, one second. ETC Cloudera SEM agent con no. Yeah, this is incorrect. Okay. Yeah, master one. That's why it's not pointing. Uh, 
cloud error. So you got what is the issue, right? Mm -hmm. See, this is the CM server. CM server means yeah, cloud error man manager server. It's not going to communicate with them. Yeah, cloud error manager you installed on master one, right? Yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah. I think, okay. System CTL. So now if you just refresh here, you can see that. Should I refresh it once? Yeah, one second. Yeah. I can see that. See, yeah. That is the issue. Mm -hmm. So or not the uh, that host name. So you just need to tell. Okay, so this file basically tell the Cloudera manager agent to connect with the, the server because otherwise this service may not be knowing. Okay, where this Cloudera manager server is running. No, so, I think it's what it's what silly, silly mistake. No, but I understand. Thank you. But that's fine. Yeah. I, I'll continue from here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You you can take me off now if you want to. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll I'll take control. Sajesh, Sajesh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without uh, copying uh, private keys and uh, private uh, these keys internally to uh, uh, other machines, how it is communicating like. Uh, uh in in this uh six nodes the three node three workers and three three nodes cluster we have not done any ssh keys part how these keys are copied uh like uh, what stuff it is copied automatically no no we have not keep copied any keys right so which which context you are talking i'm not I'm still not clear uh, uh, the keys should be generated and we should be copied. Authorized keys should be copied, right? Communication no, no, no. between uh, masters See, and authorize. Uh, okay, so that is the one common mistake. I think the people who uh, already have the Linux admin knowledge so might be knowing that better. So SSH is the one of the uh, communication protocol. Okay, so SSH make use of 22 port. And from one host to other host, we have the connectivity, so we can transfer the file, uh, copy the things. And uh, SSH can be either through the password or the passwordless, in the sense with the key. Okay. But here, the way Cloudera Manager working is not based on SSH. So the Cloudera Manager has, I think, uh, you missed that uh, Cloudera Manager initial class. So the, we have the server service and agent service. So the server to agent communication is happening with a different port. So not with the SSH port. So SSH we are making use only for the initial installation and configuration. That too, if you are not using the agent installation manually. So if you are using the agent installation, so you need, need so this part is not required here. Okay. So so the, the Cloudera manager server and agent, so it's making use of some other port, I think 7180. If you open that config.ini, you can see that port information. So this is the Cloudera manager server and we will have multiple agent. So what we okay. did, I mean, in uh, his case, what he has done is, so he already did setup of Cloudera manager server and agent he installed manually by using yum install command and updated that etc cloudera sscm agent so agent config.ini file and in that file so he has written okay what is the cloudera manager server okay and uh, oh, the remaining config if you go through that configuration file so you can see a lot more options like which port it's going to use etc so okay. basically the communication is using that port not with the ssh so okay. ssh, SSH we are just yeah, we are okay. So there are two types of, of installation. Okay, one is the manual method, which we are manually installing agent. Second is we are letting the Cloudera manager to do the agent installation. So for agent installation to happen, we need SSH. Then what happened here is at that time, so the cloud from Cloudera manager server to this host, 
see the cm agent installation and configuration has to happen so that is happening through ssh once the cm agent and server is done then the remaining things will happen via this port of port and protocol i mean the cloudera manager server to agent right just now we configured uh, one EN, ini file right just now our yeah. uh, one of our batchmates the, uh, that's, yes. that particular file is taking care of communication between agent and uh, cloudera no, manager no that that file is just a configuration file okay so there will be a process called cloudera manager server process and agent process so when we start the agent process so it, that will look into this configuration file and uh, based okay. on that configuration file it to execute okay okay actually i thought uh, ssh is mandatory for uh, cloudera no no i think uh, that uh, you missed that uh, initial classes so we clearly uh, discussed that in detail okay what is the purpose uh, we, we are in, sing, uh, in single node cluster building uh, we have used uh, ssh in multi node cluster we, we are not used the ssh that no, no, that, that that is just a different options like i said so we have options like uh, manually in doing the installation or with the help of cloud manager okay so that that are the different options i think uh, you may miss that class and uh, maybe watching the videos you won't get that much clarity so this that are the different options like i said so we can let cloudera manager to do the installation of agent or we do the installation of agent so if we are doing so we we don't want this ssh keys so we can manually log into that host and uh, do the configuration the remaining installation and configuration will happen through this cloudera manager the server fact, agent, the agent is uh, which step like uh uh, uh no, no you uh, which method you follow to uh, do the installation as per your you as per your videos only followed the installation for for this okay. uh, this this big cluster but uh, okay. in that cluster we, we have not used any ssh keys part uh, which part is replaced this ssh key part that's my question no that is what the configuration of cloud and installation of cloudera manager agent okay configuration and installation of cloud error agent oh can you just quickly tell me what are the commands we applied for that no no you already did that how did you proceed okay you just recollect that step okay so you installed the server and the agent so yeah, and one of the things the you did that just uh, yeah, that that is the steps yeah uh, i'm just asking <laughs> quickly but no no this is i think yeah Right. Yeah. So what what actually I think uh, I understand because I never did the way Sajish uh, taught, but which is again a, a, another method as Sajish rightly said. So what happens initially when we uh, what I have done installation and where I think Prasad is coming from, where you first time when you remember when we did uh, yum uh, install um, cloud server and we did agent. So we have installed agent, daemon, and Java on all the servers. But we installed Cloudera server uh, on the Cloudera server manager, right? Yes. So what happened? That we don't need to install agent in the first option where you are coming from, Prasad, where you need to have the copy, uh, keys copied over, where all the nodes can talk to each other on that, uh, on that uh, using SSH. Basically, they can create a secure, secure shell to do any operation. This is where. You don't need to do agent install manually using M repository. You install only Cloudera Manager bin, uh, that, that particular um, you know, package on the manager master's node first. And from there, you invoke that config screen. From there, it will push from master node, it will push that um, um, uh, package, YUM package, not uh, you know, um, using SSH. And then it will distribute it and it will install it basically. So this is where you need SSH keys. In this situation, what the way uh, Sajish taught us, in that situation, we are doing manually. So it's SSH keys are not needed in that sense, if that makes sense. Uh, did you uh, guys try it both method or only one? OK, it's up to you. You can choose any one. So the one, the, like, normally, uh, if you do the installation, so there are multiple ways okay so one one is we can do everything in a manual way like uh, use yum install 
and uh, for installing agent also we use cm install cloudrise cm agent and java then we open that file uh, then config.ini updated that file then started so this is the agent configuration that we are doing so if you use that as pass this ssh key in cloudera manager then you need you know, to do all these steps so because the cloudera manager will do that in that case you need that ssh key but if you are manually doing so ssh key is not needed so that is a step i think if you try both method you will be easily come to know which step you are not doing in the next uh, part and which step you are doing in the first approach so agent configuration in the sense installation means we are just installing the package then updating the file and uh, starting that agent that's it but if you do with ssh based option so the cloud manager will do that like uh, package installation jdk installation uh, configuration file changes etc okay so let me and and one more thing can i add something uh, i think in the same way when we do um, if you want to use devops Prasad, i think i think did you we talked about this one probably in first class if you want to use DevOps, any tool, I think then SSH keys would be needed. But so I think that's another point I wanted to add. Yeah, yeah that Mava X term and all. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. And the Mava X term are uh, Ansible. We need that. I, I, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Because uh, so you need to install uh, this uh, at least once and to try a different option not on, okay minimum uh, one or two times you need to do that because without installing you won't be uh, knowing okay so how these things works in real time so what could be the possible issues so definitely there will be a lot more issues you will face so do it multiple times then you will get a picture uh, yeah I'll, I'll show you that this user management i think user management also i explained that the problem is like the most of the people are uh, missing the classes in between and uh, please uh, try to i mean uh, attend uh, the classes uh, because uh, i think we already uh, did that integration and user management so so for just changing the user uh, power credential so you can go to the administration users and from here we have option to change the password also we have option to integrate with the active directory so this cloudera manager so we already integrated uh, with active uh, directory. yeah yeah uh, sorry i am asking uh, like uh, when we are logging uh, we have to give admin admin whether we can change our password also yeah that that is this one so that is the cloudera manager user i think uh, we already discuss that yes so we have this option uh, so we can create the new users like local user so we can uh, do that you have this option to change the password so this is all feasible yeah, okay. i think maybe the second or third i don't remember the exact one so we did that so we just uh, created uh, a couple of <coughs> local users and uh, also we have option to change that password so we can change yeah, that yes. from here okay uh, also we have option to integrate a ad but ad password we cannot change from here that we have to uh, do from active directory side so normally you can create a user say for example test user uh, zero two uh, okay whatever the password we can type here and uh, confirm the password and what are the various roles and create that so once the user is created so you can you have option to change the password so this one because we already did the login so i don't think it works so whatever the password you can type and change that and uh, let's uh, go back to here so we have seen uh, like uh, so how to integrate with the uh, active directory as kerberos 
So if you integrate the curve with the Kerberos, uh, definitely a uh, few things. And the last class, I think I uh, I don't know whether I told you guys about that uh, error. So I we had some issues like uh, when we do execute some of the HDFS command, uh, it was not working. And uh, I I did I did a workaround. And this was the error. I think some of you, if you already tried that Active Directory Kerberos integration, I think a couple of folks already tried this, and uh, so they got the same error. So what you need is just uh, uh, need uh, some some of the Open LDAP and uh, Kerberos libraries missing. Okay. So what you can do is just install that uh, Open LDAP and uh, you told uh, me KRB to install file. Uh, KRB file. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. KRB5, okay. Open LDAP, but I installed yeah. KRB5 and it's working. See, if we, if we do open LDAP because some of the components, KRB, Kerberos libraries are, are dependent, so that will uh, automatically get installed. Okay, I think uh, and not the last class. Before that, we had this issue. So now, if I do type like uh, this command, so it's working perfectly. So uh, let me come back here. So this is the user which is available in Active Directory. Okay, and if I do a K list, see the K list means. A, the Kerberos works is like we have a Kerberos server and we are have having a client and by default when you log in so you will have the ticket granting ticket uh, I'll, I'll explain you guys like how this kerberos works and also we will check M with the mit kerberos so we already uh, checked with only active directory as kerberos just check k list and make sure you have got a proper ticket granting ticket so the principle means this is the user and uh, so this is the validity. So you need to make sure so you have the proper validity available. So let one second. Let me uh, this option. Okay, the backup recording is something uh, goes wrong with the, our normal uh, go to meeting recording. So it will also record. Okay. And if I do HDFS, DFS, iPhone uh, LS slash user. Okay. This is working. Earlier, this was not working. And uh, the reason is uh, we, we didn't have that uh, package installed. So let me check some of the uh, worker three or uh, some of the old or other worker machine and uh, connect there and see that whether we are able to do that. So new session. Then new user key. Let me log in here. So you guys might be knowing why I'm not directly using as this user because AW has its own protection mechanism. So that prevent user uh, login with a uh, password. So that is just a protection uh, mechanism that uh, this AWS provide. But you can just turn it on or off based on your requirement, but that is not good practice since our servers are directly exposed to internet because we have attached public IP address to uh, the servers. Okay. So, so from here, so let's let me check this K list. I have the ticket granting ticket HDFS DFS. Yeah, sir. Yeah, so I think uh, this is also working. So the only thing is you just need KRB5 uh, library package. So if you are getting this error. Suppose if you don't have that, just to do a k-destroy. So k-destroy will clean my key. So I can just do a k-list and make sure these uh, things. And uh, if I do the command again, so hdfs, dfs, this one, uh, this will fail. 
So here you can see GSS API exception, no valid credential provide. Okay. So if you are working in a real time uh, scenario, so most of the case you can see uh, this kind of error. So just about, I mean, this is kind of a, a most frequent error. GSS API exception, no valid credential provide. So this means, so something wrong with the key tab or something wrong with the ticket granting ticket because this fellow is doesn't have the proper ticket granting ticket that is the reason we are getting this one okay so maybe in interview and all they will ask okay so you are just doing a troubleshooting and you can see one message like gss api or gss exception no valid credential provide what could be the possible chances so if they are using a key tab based okay like I think I, I uh, explained you, so how to create the key tab file. So maybe uh, I think some other, uh, not here. I think uh, here we have already that key tab file. Uh, uh, so this is one of the uh, service accounts key tab file and this is HDFS key tab file. So I, I just explained how to create that key tab. So it's very easy. So we can use the ktutil command and uh, add that option and once prompted you have to type the password for this user and download that key tab file so normally a user principle okay user principle means my id your id the so whoever is that like uh, uh, mem members who are all log into this cluster so i mean the manual uh, user we can say anyone who is having account so normally those users won't create the key tab file but they will create in a very rare cases otherwise they will just do a k in it by using their own credentials so they i can just do a k in it uh, then uh, i i can i add my id okay uh, sorry uh, k in it uh, i think i missed So if I do a K in it like this, okay, I'm getting, a, uh, this is my principal name. That means my ID uh, in Kerberos terminology, we call this as principal. So this is the user principal and uh, we have HDFS also, right? So that is having its own uh, name called service principal. So once you do this K list, you will get K destroy. You can just clear the ticket granting ticket. So if you don't have any key, so no credential, I mean, that means no ticket granting ticket, then all these commands fails. And you can generate that ticket granting ticket by using k init command, right? Then if you do that, you can see that. So there are multiple ways to do the k init. So you can use the k init with the help of key tab file also. In that case, you can just use the k init hyphen kt, so whatever the key type file and use the principal name. So if you don't know the principal name, then you can get the principal name from the key type file. So klist hyphen kt, then this one. So if you want to uh, initialize the key for this principal, you can use uh, k init hyphen uh, kt, whatever the principal, I mean, the key type file name, principal name, just enter. So this time, if I do klist, I got from this principle. So if uh, normally uh, we write uh, this service principle, okay? So HDFS and HDFS key tab and all very rarely we use. Uh, I, I will show you. So we have a separate uh, permission mechanism. So sentry that with that we can just control. But otherwise we use the HDFS uh, key tab file very rare cases. Uh, but uh, this key tab, any any service ID, we call uh, application ID or service ID. For that, we use uh, the key tab file. Okay. In any application script and all, we write that name. So maybe we will write like this, k in it, iPhone kt. Then what is the uh, print, this one, and uh, this one. So now we got ticket granting ticket. So normally in an application code, maybe shell action or any any kind of thing. So they write 
do a k in it like this and uh, if anything happened to this or if they change the password for this user or if key tab got corrupted something then they won't have a proper ticket granting ticket in that case we will get this kind of error gss api exception so you need to check okay this key tab is proper so whatever the key first to find out the key tab they are using just to do a k list and try to k in it from your uh, directory or your id uh, for that key tab file and if that is not working then you need to rectify that okay so that is the gss exception no valid credential provide means we don't have a ticket granting ticket okay so what is the significance key tab what does it so hold Kita, yeah the key so, tab is uh, just like a, a a file that mm -hmm. contain the password in encrypted form okay i think uh, last class we were discussed about this key tab and we created that key tab okay indeed yeah you did yeah but uh, what happens that in this scenario take example if you do ls minus l l you will see mm -hmm. two tab files yeah one for but, user yeah. Mm. So you know, not on, I think I was talking to master. Yeah. So one yeah. for the FS and one for PR zero zero uh, that service prin uh, service principle we created that service user. Mm. Yeah. And 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 when we do create it from here, even though you okay. logged in as a, your own account, but you can still create a key tab for other users. No, no. I can create the key tab for other user, but I should know the password for that user. It's just like we are switching to that user. Ah, okay. okay, I see. Okay, so it's but not like, uh, uh, yeah. So the key sorry. tab simply storing the principal name and its password in some sort of encrypted form. So anyone can create the key tab file. Okay, so the key tab creation will work for anyone, but if they type the wrong password, they won't be able to do uh, this K in it. So K in it won't work. So okay. you got what I'm saying, right? Yeah, See, yeah. KT util don't restrict, like, uh, say, for example, I can just use, uh, okay, so let me uh, go to other user or just to get a duplicate session. Okay, so KT util, so add ENT. I think uh, iPhone, iPhone password, iPhone P. Oh, I don't remember that. KT util command I be used. Okay. So KT util anyone can create. So what I'm saying is add ENT iPhone I not iPhone 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 password. Okay. So for which which principle you want to create? Uh, say for example, I am taking the principle as this one, right? And uh, what is the key version, etc. The form is let's say like uh, iPhone iPhone key. Uh, then which version? Then iPhone E encryption what type of encryption it support i think you can just view this etc uh, krb5.conf and uh, see some of the encryption it support so this is the one sort of encryption it support just use that so what i am saying is so kt util anyone can uh, execute and anyone can do this so once prompted type the password so once you type the password here then only you can continue and based on that, it create a file or that we will uh, specify which file we want to create. So whatever the password you can type here. So it it won't do a check with the Active Directory. Okay, I just uh, written an incorrect password. Definitely I know that is incorrect, but intentionally I did an incorrect password. So now if I use WKT, I can add any name. Okay, not uh, see this name also I can add key tab. Or, or if you want uh, the full name, that is also fine. Uh, whatever the name you want, you can do that. So this will download a file PR00 key tab. But you know, I, I have written something wrong, but I, I don't know the password for this principle. Now, if I quit, you can see the file is created. 
if you just use the klist hyphen kt that is working but if i use k in it hyphen kt uh, this one then whatever the principle it won't work so pre authentication failed while getting initial credentials so that means okay so you can create the kitab or anyone can create any kitab so there is no restriction but the thing is it should have contained the actual password of that user i see so when we schedule any um, jobs so we hmm. we uh, create the kita file first for that service uh, the principal or that user which is scheduling the job correct exactly and also and we create in yeah. such a way that the password never expire or and also the people won't change the password because if they change the password the existing key tab won't work i see so then all the job or whichever way the commands are scheduled or the job are scheduled hmm. they will be keep um, executing k in it um, kt and that service service name uh, sorry and then key tab which we have created in past referring to that key tab every time yeah hmm. i see so it, but how they will be passing the password then they, uh do they need to pass pass no we don't they don't need to no, pass no. instead of instead of the passing the password and all so they are using this file okay no i i got oh, yeah yeah okay so the reason is if you miss this misplace this file then your security is compromised so normally people will uh, keep it with the read only access uh, and also uh, they will uh, not uh, i mean uh, give the access to anyone else because if you copy this file proper file i am working so, i mean see here i created one but i don't know the actual password so if i know the actual password i can write here and do that like your user id you are anyone can log in right but they should know the password similarly here also this key tab anyone can create but the working key tab you know the password for that user i mean that id you got what i'm saying right yeah and so also you should see a, this error yeah so take example that if um take example if pawan logs in into in this cluster yeah and mm -hmm. he has copied this file pr001srv.ktab so he can mm -hmm. execute anything even though he doesn't know the password but he can execute anything he like ah uh, using that yes. that uh, say for example yeah. i got this key tab okay so key tab means i got his uh, identity so i need not to know about the, his password and all so what i can do is i can just key list and see the, uh, see his uh, principal name and uh, so if, now if i do k in it iphone kt whatever the key tab and principal name just enter if you do k list you can see he got a ticket granting ticket for this user now if you do hdfs dfs iphone mkdir uh, slash tmp okay so test dir whatever it may be okay i'm just creating a directory so you you think you may be thinking i'm here with this user and i created a directory like this so now if you do hdfs dfs ls this what would be the what would be the, be the ownership of this test dir so you may be thinking this user right but no because we have the kita file or i mean initialize for this user that means if you just take a list you can see that principle and uh, executed that command so even though i am executing from this user by actual permission is happening uh, with this user so that is the reason it got the default ownership of that user and also if i run any job so that job will be executed with this user per permission okay see if i give my key tab to you guys so you will have my my access so if i am getting your uh, key tab so i'll have that so the key tab is very important so that contain uh, the, that uh, principle and uh, the password in an encrypted form yeah okay uh, so we will uh, see a couple of more uh, example and uh, when we this uh, one second
this. Okay, uh, so any other question? One second, let me uh, get the K admin, K init, KT util purpose. Okay, uh, so KT util we have already uh, seen. Okay, so KT util command is used for uh, creating uh, the key type file. And also we have seen the K init command also, like for initializing key. And K admin normally we can use for uh, login to uh, this uh, uh, Kerberos. I mean, connecting to Ker Kerberos. So normally K admin. So we use this when we use an MIT based Kerberos. So iPhone P, what is the principle we need? Administrator at uh, Adobe.com. Then once prompted, uh mm, i don't remember okay so maybe we have uh, other user so if you should know the like uh, uh H admin, maybe. Uh, so normally K admin we can use for connecting to this uh, Kerberos uh, from Unix terminal. So we use k admin iphone p whatever the principle so principle is the username so normally we should be able to use with the administrator okay okay so administrator password we are uh, we don't know but for that we need to uh, get uh, this ad password so for getting the password just uh, use that and uh, go to the desktop and the cloud are training. So new, then decrypt. I think uh, this is incorrect. Uh, training cloud PM. Yeah, so this is the uh, password. Then type that password. I don't know. Maybe we will do that when we do with the MIT Kerberos integration. So, so K admin normally we use for connecting to a Kerberos database. Uh, when you say Kerberos database, that will be that mean um, that will be in uh, connecting to AD database. Uh, yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. So that's why it needs need needed uh, the admin password for um, uh, that box isn't it correct so we will uh, do that maybe uh, ad in the sense it's a directory service plus kerberos yeah. okay yeah. so we have a sub, another uh, implementation of uh, kerberos so that is with mit kerberos unix based uh, so it's all the protocol the way it's working is uh, same but the implementation is slightly different so we will be using this k admin command most frequently when we interact with the MIT Kerberos. So that we, uh, we will uh, see uh, later in detail. So any other questions? How to change the admin password? Uh, OK. Uh, fine. Then now uh, let's uh, go ahead and add, uh, explore one of the service, Hive. OK. So Hive. Uh, Okay, so let's uh, just quickly see some theory on Hive. So Hive is mainly used for data warehousing. Like if you have a lot of data, 
so you can load into hive and so there are a lot of transformation and uh, query functions available with the hive so by using that as uh, you can uh, do that so now normally like we do in a normal data warehousing maybe we use oracle or some other db but here we can use the hive so it's if you compare it with any relational database so you can see a lot of similarity so we have the concept of db table uh, then functions uh, then uh, permissions privileges etc so the way it is working is the hive uh, has uh, uh, it's a uh, the if you just uh, the behind so hive is making use of hdfs and uh, map reduce okay and uh, so for storage of data it's using hdfs and for processing it's using map reduce and also it is having a metadata so that is in any of the relational database so metadata means data about the data so if you look into hive at very high level you can see uh, actual data is, might be stored in hdfs because hdfs we can store huge quantity of data and whenever we do process the data so it's uh, doing with the map reduce so the faster the result and also we have got tables uh, databases etc so that is stored in uh, sql uh, i mean any uh, relational database so it support mysql oracle postgres etc okay and uh, so mainly if you look into the services what are the uh, components hive is having so one is hive server 2 and uh, then uh, meta metadata server then uh, we have a thrift and uh, uh, the other services which will uh, helps us helps us to connect from other services so mainly high server 2 is the service or daemon and high metastore server service also there so first we will go ahead and add uh, the service okay and next we will explore uh, the what are the options available so adding hive is very easy from the cloudera manager window from here go to add service okay then go ahead and hit hive then continue then you can choose uh, different services like i told hive has got hive meta store server uh, web catalog server and hive server too so gateway is nothing but a, just a client service so it won't use any uh, i mean it basically it won't run as a daemon or service so it's just an executables that will be copied to those machines so you can, even if you are choosing all the host as gateway so it doesn't make any difference because it's there won't be any load for this gateway so each and every services will have the gateway service so high meta store service is the one which is responsible for managing metadata so you will be knowing what is metadata soon so we it's basically managing a relational database can be oracle or mysql or postgres whatever the database we have option to configure that so web catalog service is basically we can make use of this high service from other services so we can choose any one of the server for that and hive server 2 is the i mean the where we are in going to start this so we can have the multiple hive server unlike other like this is also support but initially i'm adding it only on one host okay so adding hive it's very easy and straightforward so only thing is you have to choose the server so where we want to install these sub components so mainly hive server 2 and high meta store server so you can skip all these uh, web web catalog uh, or you can skip and uh, maybe this one you can add one or two host alone that's enough so these are the two major uh, services that we need to add um, then so continue yeah. 
sorry, on the back one. So um, there are two questions. So um, where we have a database setup, usually I have mm -hmm. seen people do on a separate box altogether. And they ha they keep Hive data, metadata uh, on a third, like, you know, C MySQL, SQL, uh, Oracle. And yeah. they will keep the Cloudra, Cloudra service. You know the database we created earlier. Hmm. They keep this one and uh, the Cloudra manager database together. Is that good practice? Uh, yes, uh, de definitely. The problem is uh, this MySQL, we have a high availability and all, like, right? So if, but what if this MySQL goes down? So we can have the high availability enabled at the DB side also. Sometimes people will use, uh, it's all based on the budget. See, if you have uh, the proper budget, okay. so you can have, sometimes the people do with a single node also. I mean, everything over there. So if you have the proper budget, the be best way is to do it in a separate host, like so Cloudera Manager in a separate host, then DB Server in a separate host, and also some organization, there will be a separate team for managing the DB itself. Yeah. But uh, maybe it all depends on the, uh, the department size or the uh, project size or a company size, etc. So we, we won't get anything. We will just tell them, OK, so this is the database we need. So they will take care of all the availability, replication, backup, everything. So they will take care of that. Understood. So best practice is to have a separate database. That is definitely because and that too with the high availability and the DR solution, then very good. So because if that data service is down, then we won't have the service. OK, yeah. so high service server two and all we can add it in a different. Uh, I will show you how to do that availability settings so we can add it in multiple host. But okay. this one, uh, only one uh, is supported at, at this time. Okay. That's fine. What so, about web hatch catalog? So take example when if users want to log into Hive or they want to query something, do they log into web, that hatch catalog? Web, web hatch no, catalog? no. Hatch, hatch catalog mainly if they want to use from uh, Pig or if they want to use from Spark or uh, it's all uh, API based. So normally, so for a end user to do queries and all, so web catalog is not required. So we will see oh, right. that uh, use cases later. So when we do with, uh, I mean, so when developers make use of that based on the requirement, but normal case, we don't need that. That is again an optional component here. Fantastic, okay. thank you. But, uh, so this is the master host. Like I said, so meta store service require a database. So it make use of one database to store all its uh, uh, metadata. OK, so Hive, if you uh, look into this picture, so HDFS is there, MapReduce is there, and then metadata is managed by uh, meta, uh, any any relational database. So the supported DBs are MySQL, Postgres, and Oracle. So since we already have some uh, MySQL, so I'm just going ahead with the MySQL instance. And here, you have to write your server name. So by default, it will uh, come with the, the server where we uh, choose uh, to install Hive uh, metadata service. So, but you can write any other server. Maybe in your case, if you have a separate DB which is available on uh, other uh, uh, server, so you can write that name. And you have to DB name, username, and the password, and you have to test that. So, in our case, so we are just going ahead with the database which is available on master one. So, I need to create the database and users here. So go to the master one. So I think, uh, yeah, I can connect from anywhere, like iPhone U root, iPhone P. Right. So this is how I connected MySQL. So I installed MySQL uh, separately, maybe for some other uh, purpose. So maybe for our Cloudera manager. Yeah, SCM is there. Then uh, cloud other cloud manager performance schema and uh, resource uh, our manager etc. So I'm going to create one more DB here. Okay, so you can use the single database. I mean uh, uh, thing, not the database. I mean to say this MySQL instance for this cloud manager and all. Maybe you can have the separate instance, but I'm using the one which is already available on master one. So create database. I can write any name. I'm just using HiveDB. Okay. 
then you can make sure like show databases and see that database hive db okay so i just created this db hive db and then i need to create user so whatever the user uh hi user at percentage see normally uh when we use okay the people who are already from the uh, uh sql background or uh, already use this mysql so they might be knowing uh, this very well so normally we use the host name appended here so if i use the percentage symbol i think uh, you, it will work with the most of the combinations so we are not sure from uh, the other tool so maybe it can be a program or java code or whatever the thing that cloudera manager is using the connection string may come with a hive user at localhost hive user at master one if you use a percentage so you just need to create only this one so this will work for all the combination identified by password so that is the reason you are we are using the percentage here again i am also not an expert in this uh, sql and uh, my sql thing but you may be thinking what why what if you use just a hive user identified by password the problem is sometime it may not work <clears throat> so if you use this one so it will work with all the combination so grant all privileges to uh, what is the hive db dot star to this user uh, -R -I -V -I -L -L. We are grant all privileges to oops I don't remember that grant all okay to you sir Uh, oh okay we are I, we are on i think i i need to use to okay so you got this uh but i i just made a mistake here so on so grant all privileges on hive dot start to user hive so we have the uh, this thing hive user and hive db uh, and the password is the password so i just need to make sure like so this is working for my sql hyphen u i user and hyphen p once prompted type the password whatever the password we set here just a show databases should list that particular database so now we have everything in place so come back here so database name is hive db user name is hive user password okay so this is successful suppose so there is another one more thing so jdbc driver jar file should be there so if that driver is not there so you may get that jdbc exception so in that case you have to install this jdbc uh, driver okay so go ahead and continue then high warehouse location so i will show you this directory in detail so by default uh, whenever we create a database or tables so the files will be created under this location so this is the warehouse location so slash user high warehouse just continue that directory will be on master server or that directory will be on the database server uh, that is an hdfs directory so that means that will be on every uh, no no that that, that 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 is an hdfs so can 
uh, I mean, uh, so uh, what I mean to say is HDFS directory means it will be, it, say for example, we have a directory, right? HDFS, DFS, LS, slash user, right? So mm. this is the directory. So this directory, where this directory is located. So we don't have an answer for that, right? Because this directory is managed by HDFS and whatever the files we put inside, so that will be distributed to any of the worker host. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, so it will okay. be all for, the HDFS. All, all the worker host. So, but again, for a directory, but that is a case of file, but for a directory, it won't use any uh, block size. So it's just a metadata. So that will be stored in HDFS or name node um, namespace. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, okay. So that that directory again. Uh, so we will see that, and uh, this is completed, and then finish. Okay. So we just install that high service, okay? So we have options here like a start, stop, and uh, configuration, delete, rename, etc. Okay, just hit there, and uh, so here under status summary, it will show if anything goes wrong. Okay, so what is the health state? Is there anything, uh, any problem, etc. And go to the instances. So we'll give you an information. So what how many what are the gateway? So gateway and all you can see in ash color. So that means it is not a service or daemon. So it's just a gateway. That means this executables will be copied there. So high meta store, high server and webcat server. So these are running as daemon. And the next tab is configuration, but these options are same for all uh, services. So warehouse directory, then uh, Okay, so the zookeeper we need, maybe we will add that. Okay. So this is about the configuration. So what are the configuration options? And uh, commands, if you just uh, did something, uh, uh, start, stop and all. So you will get that from the history. And uh, this chart uh, about the event and all. Audit. So we have option like, uh, uh, what what are the changes we have done? So what are what are the things we have done, etc. So web UI, I think uh, let's uh, skip that. Okay, so this is how the hive uh, looks like in Cloudera Manager. The remaining things we will connect from either from the terminal or a tool called Hue. So we will see how to connect from the terminal. Okay. And uh, uh, okay, so we will just uh, keep it here, and we because I just wanted to show you the metadata, and uh, this one I'm just changing switching to my ID. So for connecting, we use B line. Okay, so use B line hyphen U, then JDBC colon hive two. Okay, so don't uh, write uh, this first. So just an easy one option is just a two. Two means the second, so it should be second hive two. So JDBC first, and then then here you need to use the IP address or host name of the uh, server. I mean, uh, server in the sense, high server two. So here we have a master. Okay, so high server two, this one. And uh, the next is the port on which port this high server two is running. So for that, you can just go to the configuration and search with the port. So you can see the high uh, server to port. This is 10,000. And use that value here. Then by default, 
so it will be connecting to a default DB. So normally this is enough if you are using a non Kerberos enabled system. If your uh, environment is Kerberos enabled, then you need to add one more thing called principal. Okay, the principal means what is the principal name uh, for this hive? So when you install this hive in a Kerberos enabled system, there will be a principal created. Okay, so if you go to the uh, AD server, you can see that or else administration, security, Kerberos credential and search with the hive. You can see this is the principal that created for hive. Okay, so you know how to get this right. So from the administration, security, Kerberos credential, just a search hive. So you will get just copy that and use that value here and then enter. So now you can just read the message. If you see some something error, like it's not able to connect or the connection related issue. So you can see that now it's connected. Just use show databases. See here it's just listing a database with the name default. Okay, so default is a database name. So let's go back to here. Uh, so this is a MySQL database, right? Sorry, databases. Okay, so use Hive DB show tables. See, there are a lot of tables in MySQL corresponding to this Hive. So I think uh, this is the tables. Similarly, uh, for database, I think there will be a DBs, right? Select star from I think uh, one moment. Okay, so uh, don't confuse the tables and database from uh, this MySQL. Uh, with the hive database and table so we have got a default database in hive so like i said the complete metadata is stored in mysql so maybe it can it can be postgres or oracle based on the configuration and we have got this much tables so all these tables contain the metadata information about the hive uh, say for example table then uh, so table means whatever the table we have available so but nothing is there so if i create any table in hive so come back to the hive prompt and i can create database also create database training 01 i've just created one database training 01 right so now if i come back here and select star from db so you can see uh, one more database training DB here. Okay, see, this is the new database which I created, uh, training 01. And you can see one location for each DB, there is a default location. So, this is the warehouse location which we have seen earlier, right? So by default, whenever you create something in Hive, so it will be under this warehouse location. Uh, but again, so we can uh, do it in a separate location also, uh, if you want. Uh, say for example, uh, create database uh, training 02. Then you can just specify one location. So slash user slash my ID, then okay, uh, create database.
my training zero to location i think uh, oh sorry i should use this uh, not here sorry guys I, I have to use this one uh hive okay so i'm just creating another database training zero to with the location as this one so now if i do query here select star from dbs again you can see this directory so this is the non-default one i manually type that value and that is the reason it's coming here okay so this is clear okay uh, so give me just uh, five minutes time i'll be right back
Hello? Is this? Are you back? Yeah, hi. I'm back. Hi. Uh, is this? I have a few doubt, few questions, not doubts, questions about IO. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, can you open that notepad screen? Which one? Which one? Notepad? Yeah, you have written something on the diagram, right? I have server. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Right, right. <laughs> okay. After executing that uh, create database command, what are the activities are performed by HS2? I server 2? Yeah, uh, so this is what uh, I'll, 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 I'll explain to you because uh, so that thing I made to uh, come to that. Okay, so I think uh, we have uh, everyone uh, back and uh, available. Uh, I think. Uh, think okay, fine. Uh, see, uh, so when I create a database, okay, so there are a few changes happen to the system. One is it will create that directory. So, for example, when I uh, create this database training 01, so it hive create an HDFS directory slash user hive warehouse already there inside that training DB. So, if you just check this one, so there will be a directory created training DB. <laughs> okay, so open one more session. One second. Then, uh, so is you. Okay, so HDFS, DFS, type then LS under uh, this directory okay so there is another directory created uh, and also uh, for an extent uh, i mean the database with the, we gave the location so you can see this directory might be created like if i do hdfs ls here you can see uh, this training 02 is created so when you create a database from hive so first one thing it do is it create corresponding directories so only the directories in hdfs so if you based on the way we create if we do with the location it will create that directory here so if you don't uh, use any location by default it will create under hive warehouse location so you may be thinking what is a hive warehouse location so it's a directory slash user slash hive warehouse uh, see slash user slash hive warehouse so that is the directory that it's making use of default when you create a database it will create the a directory under this folder so next is it will update whatever the tables in uh, see we have lot of tables here in our metadata server so that it will update these tables also i mean so not all the table so wherever this database information is stored okay so that will happen when we create a database so database basically what happened is it create an hdfs directory and update whatever the details about the database uh, so you can just what use are, what are the sure. differences between uh, regular database rdbms database and hive database see this is the difference okay it's using an hdfs directory and all the metadata information is stored in uh, this uh, mysql all, so all database commands works in hive no no the commands are different okay not all so it's having its own uh, commands so but if you compare with the sql 
so you can see a lot of similarities like uh, create database create tables and all and also the queries also but there are some commands slightly differs what are objects like all the database objects can be created in hive uh, object in the sense like tables, tables and all index and all procedures yes, store uh, no no not all okay so that is like uh, so here we have some restrictions and uh, limitation so we don't have all the options that an oracle db or mysql db provides but uh, still some of them are available so if you get just uh, go to this hive some and, compression uh, techniques it, everything <laughs> is there right in hive i think some compression yeah yeah the detailed thing like how it works like as an administrator we don't uh, do um go in not much into that but what we do is just like uh, so we will make sure like the so tables databases permission settings and all so if you are more looking into the high development then there is uh, there are uh, enough documentation available so lot of things like join and all those operations are available with hive also no no, no. i'm just asking about compression techniques and all we don't need to know all those things like uh, for hive mm -hmm. uh, just uh, handling the Option, handling. Op options are available yeah i mean to say okay so this is like a database i created so i can just use uh, use this option so just switching into database and create table see roots name then string price okay so i just created a table okay show tables roots okay then uh so but insert into work but mostly what people do uh so you can just use uh, insert into table works but mostly people do is like uh, so they will add or um insert uh, data as a bulk load so rather than uh, storing the data one by one so okay. see this i'm creating a hive database here right now or uh... this, is, this is the hive terminal only yes yes this is a hive okay so here i just created one table okay but uh, but we are using mysql right no no this is not mysql so this is hive only okay let me close that mysql i think you're getting confused so this is the mysql okay and this is a hive terminal i just switched to one user so maybe you may be this confusing the reason is this commands looks almost similar okay okay so create a table so it's just create you can create create database and uh, show tables will list whatever the tables available and uh, you can just use describe so that will uh, like give you and uh, you have option like describe formatted so that will give you a detailed view okay and uh, for a table also there will be a directory involved in backend okay so by default it choose the location where your database is having the directory and inside that one folder with that table name okay so i just use the describe formatted then fruits this is the table name and that will print the complete details so now if i go to one of the hosts and uh, warehouse and uh, <clears throat> this directory okay so one directory is created so this is created by default inside this warehouse location okay so if i just drop that table so see the table has dropped now if you look here so 
you cannot see this directory because it delete this particular directory also so this type of tables are called internal table okay so internal table means okay let me create the same table again and we'll show you uh, see i just created the table so by default i don't specified any location so by default it create a directory inside the default warehouse location you can just verify that okay and also if you just look into the mysql db then show databases then go inside that hive db then show tables you can see tbls so this is the select star from see you can see that table detail here so this is the table Okay, so this is uh, just a table, and uh, uh, if I delete that table, so just a drop table, and uh, you can see this metadata is cleaned. I mean, the whatever the metadata corresponding to that table table has gone. Also, whatever the actual data corresponding to that table has gone. So normally, uh, what people do, okay, so this is just a simple table I uh, created. So I will create another. A uh, table so so create table fruits name string price int okay then raw format delimited terminated by comma right see i i just created a table like this way so earlier i just created without specifying anything so create a table then what are the table name then what is a column then raw format delimited and fields terminated by comma that means so whenever I load data to this tab table, I mean, so the fields are, I mean, the name and price values would be separated with the comma. So that is the one which we specified here. So for that, let's try to load some data to here. So now if I just use the select star from uh, these fruits, nothing is there. So let's uh, try to upload some values here just what i'm just using is vi uh, value any any file name run.txt then i'm writing apple 150 mango 60 i should use comma then orange 50 pineapple 40. this is the value okay and the complete path is this one i need to load this data into this hive so how to do that so you can use load data local in path okay. whatever the path into table roots i don't remember the syntax it should be in single word or uh, i think it should be into load data local in path okay so i don't remember the exact syntax 
so we will just see here load data local Okay, so this is the syntax load data local okay so so this is the single one in path Oops. It's saying like uh, so no files are here. And we have that file available on master one. Uh, yeah, that is the one option. But if you use in path, it should take from the uh, uh, local directory, not from HDFS. So just use uh, local in path instead of local in path let let's upload into hdfs and try so hdfs dfs iphone put i'm uploading this file into slash user okay just take this one value.txt and this is hdfs location so instead of local in path just use in path and use that hdfs location so now it's uh, uploaded okay but only the difference is instead of local in path i just use in path so local in path should work if the file is available in its uh, local directory i don't know maybe so this is uploading from other host and we have the file in different one so load data in path and whatever the path into the table name so this will load from this file but just in path means this is an hdfs directory into the fruit so if i just use select star from fruits see the apple and if just use the select name see if you look into our data so our data looks like this one so we just use that comma separated so the fields are separated with the comma so the this is the first field second one so in our table so we have got two fields name and price and uh, so normally what people do first define the schema i mean so schema means how the table looks like so what are the fields it and what is the property etc so define the complete table then upload the data so data loading will be uh, maybe the bulk process okay uh, say for example so if i just do selects actual data is stored in hdfs so now we uploaded this one uh, to this table but if you look into this directory i mean warehouse directory where we were checking earlier and under training one db and we have fruits so if i use hdfs dfs ls this is the table's actual location in hdfs like here i told like so it's uh, using hdfs for storage and you can see one file here so if i just use hdfs dfs iphone cat see the file is here actually load data in path command what it does is load that file into the hdfs location corresponding to that uh, table uh, say for example i can create another another one also uh, say for example uh, value uh, 2.txt
strawberry 150 banana 50 okay see this value i can directly upload this hdfs dfs iphone put okay if i directly upload to this directory the same effect so the same effect as that we do with a put come i mean the load command so i just directly copying this file into this hdfs location now come back to the, the terminal and if i do select star you can see now strawberry and pineapple i mean banana has come so all all some extra field also has come so similarly uh we'll have to uh, i mean whatever the files available there based on the uh, uh field separator it take the values okay so this is how we create the table so these tables are called the uh, internal table because whenever we delete the table okay so the table uh, characteristics we can get from here also see manage table also known as internal table that is the same name and uh, if i delete the table both data and schema will be get deleted so external table creation is uh, uh, almost the same syntax but we use uh, create external table and also we use the location okay and there is a option we call its location and then use flash user flash uh, then that's it okay i think uh, oh okay uh, so it's a table already exists so it's underscore yeah so now if you just use the short tables you can see two tables so if i just use the describe that will just describe the schema if i just use the describe formatted it will give you the detailed option like uh, so manage table and uh, what is the next day one and describe formatted this table if you use so this shows the table type so where is the table external table so uh, and if you just select star see you can see the table uh, characteristics here so this is the mysql window and uh, what i'm saying is the metadata will be there and actual data is also there so here the actual data is stored in hdfs dfs ls in our external db so this is the location okay so the location you can get from uh, either here okay see this is the location now uh, so i have two type of tables so normal table and uh, external table see if i just use describe uh sorry uh, if i just drop this table drop table fruits that is dropped now if you just go and set the schema schema is deleted and under warehouse uh, this one if you just see here hdfs dfs ls so this fruits directory itself might have gone so that means in Internal or manage table if you do delete so it will delete uh, both table and sch uh, schema and meta uh, actual data but the other one is external table so drop table this one so, so you can see if you go here and you can see the schema is clearing but the actual data so that is stored under this location under fruits that will be still there okay 
so this is how external and internal uh, or uh, managed table works okay so we will okay. suggestion suggestion yeah uh when we when we execute these commands in the hive side v line side what are the arn or map reduce related activities going on in the hadoop no no now so no map reduce jobs are getting executed so Even map reduce jobs will be data, executed when you load the data no no that will not execute when uh, map reduce will be uh, executed only for the complex uh, i mean uh, we call uh, operations like count uh, those kind of operation okay so, so this no, load no, select and all no. will not be get executed any map reduced job like say for example table creation loading data and all will not be execute any uh, map reduced job so i will show you one example uh, say for example uh, we what what I, i don't remember the name we call for this kind of operations like count average and uh, those kind group of complex functions. query group, function, group functions yeah uh, so then it will execute so let me uh, create one table uh, and uh, show you that like what uh, are the scenarios the map reduce will come into picture like uh, yeah that's what uh, one second uh, create table no row format okay i again created this fruits table and uh, i love to upload these files to okay either i can use this uh, load data local in path or i can just uh, uh, upload my files to this directory that also will do okay hdfs dfs ls and under this directory if you see nothing is there but i can upload uh, my files like so hdfs dfs i can put now if i do select star from right see if i just use uh, select count uh, star from okay what do we call i think aggregate or segregate operation i, I don't remember exactly what people use this uh, for this aggregate operations yeah uh, in when we do this see this is actually a very small case but still it's initializing the map reduce job that is the reason it's uh, taking a lot of time but in case of a table with the millions of record so the initialization time may be may not be that much see uh, you can see this is executed as a map reduce job and uh, application id so uh, like if you just uh, uh, loading creating dropping and all will not trigger any map reduce but this kind of functions like average count uh, sum so those things will done using uh, this map reduce job okay and uh, you can see that application details okay how much percentage is completed and also you there will be a, a job id so you can just uh, go back to the cloudera manager and uh, go to yarn so yarn will provide a web based link web ui and resource manager ui if you go there you can see that uh, job details just a second uh, i think uh, if if this is not working so let's uh, use that public ip address of this machine so yarn uh, resource manager we installed on master so we can use the same ip address and port is 8088 use this okay i see so this is the first map reduce and this is the application id and uh, which queue it has run what is the type of uh, this one and what is the code when it started so what is the status etc okay 
so if i do execute again so there will be another map job application will trigger so this is how it run uh, so normally people will have the data with millions or billions of records and they do that query but normally if you just see uh, consider the initialization time so if you do the same in mysql with that will finish within seconds only we have six column available or six rows available but here the problem is since it's running as a MapReduce job <clears throat> there will be some initialization and all will happen so for that it uh, takes some time okay uh, so that, any uh, other resource questions? manager and container launching application master the, those concepts not at covered right no no okay okay and uh, what are the regular issues i mean uh, in real time uh, uh, cluster uh, uh, regarding hive related issues what are the issues we generally face see the, there will be i mean it's all depends sometimes uh, they we, as part of day to day activities we may need to clear uh, some of the uh, tables they will uh, maybe external table clearing so sometimes the queries may not work properly so maybe that's a performance issue so this kind of things will happen normally okay so and also some sometimes the query uh, the problem with the uh, query side so it will uh, take a lot of time to finish so in that time so we have to monitor here and uh, see if we think any long running job is there so you can make use of some scripting logic here and uh, alert so maybe more than one day or two days uh, taking then you have to ask them to re release that resources so these are some some Perform sort of performance related things i mean uh, loading of data or creating of table those related uh, issues or uh, execution of select statements with uh, co select queries issues the performance will uh, issues will come like anything and hum so but these are the i mean sometimes even they won't their application won't run or sometimes uh, they have some uh, challenges like uh, the performance related or sometimes uh, uh, they have some i mean the slot may not be available and their jobs will be in the queued state so these kind of things normally they will report so sometimes even they may have some issues with their query so that cause issue then that takes some time to uh, sometimes we'll have to also go through that logs and see what could be the issues so and also we will have uh, support from the vendor cloudera so in these cases uh, you can simulate some some real time scenarios because uh, after uh, learning this course again we need to spend time for learning uh, real time issues that's a big yeah, issue if you do do this a couple of times and practice it definitely a lot of issues will come so take some sample job cases and submit so issues will come the main thing is just yeah, to do that yeah. practice yeah yeah i face some of the issues in hive i can mm -hmm. can i yeah yeah yes yes uh, we have some user uh, like uh, one batch id will be one user having another batch id some user having for a particular one user b line is not working uh, we check that uh, BLAN dot property is present in one of the user and other user BLAN dot property was not present and we take the uh, backup of the BLAN dot property the guy which is not working the uh, BLAN and uh, after taking the backup of that uh, he should able to run the BLAN command and we check that file what is the issue high conf equal to null something value is there that is also one issue and uh, truncate table not work for some of the users we need to add some property script trash equal to true and uh, vertex error also uh, we enable it and after data was changed taking two or three days to execute the query and uh, after jstack and everything we submit to the vendor uh, Hortonworks, uh, they said that it is the issue with the vertex error and we make it fast and again it uh, works like it works fine. Uh, mostly is, these issues. Is, and that. Who is speaking on the, our line? What is your name? Pawan. Pawan, okay. Pawan. What's your number? Uh, I, I need to know more details because I am preparing for interviews. Uh, Pawan. Uh, 
can you please uh, share your number at least i, I will uh, practice some of the issues yeah okay fine no issues what's your number yeah in the in this group chat uh, you have my name it's in the group it's in the group yes WhatsApp. yes, yes. So the one common thing is like they will keep submit and uh, the slot or resource may not be there. So in that case, job will be in accepted state and uh, will be in waiting state. So that is a common case. And they will okay come to the support team and say, okay, so our job is not running. So we we, we cannot do anything there except uh, find out the long running queries or the uh, we feel like the queries which are not progressing then inform them to check and uh, let them once they delete that uh, then the, this whatever the accepted job will continue okay so also we have this uh, log file available so if you have the application id so we can get that so other than that i think hive is uh, much more stable so unlike any other products i mean, uh, so we we won't get much issues here except uh, uh, this job failure uh, related to some query or uh, some long running things and uh, the sort not available kind of things you mentioned to write a script what is that type no no long running see you have to find out the long running what are the jobs which is running for see you will get a start time and a job status so you can yes. filter out that job and uh, it's all based on our requirement and logic so you say, you say for example if it's running submitted more than or to one day or two day so you can uh, just uh, write some script to uh, alert that where to write so otherwise, a script? like yeah otherwise yeah. you can just go to this page resource manager ui and to get that information okay when it started or whether it's a running state okay so you can just see that and when it started and why this is still running so you can approach to that user who submitted and uh, get that done and so maybe like they sometimes sometimes they will uh, uh, stop that sometimes the most of the time the people will submit and go so they won't just check okay whether the job is uh, prop running properly so results are updating properly etc so but where in case if script writing required where to write a script script you can write uh, any any one of the host okay but how so, where to, uh, how to manage the how to manage the queue you know by the script uh, by command level ah okay there is a, like a yarn uh, a command okay so yarn application is there and uh, so that uh, so you are uh, asking about the core logic how to build that right yeah, 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 yeah. Not only the hive, uh, you will. If you just want the hive, then you can use that. So otherwise, like the yarn application list, and uh, uh, that will list all the yarn jobs running. So for okay. example, if my, uh, then uh, for yarn jobs, uh, I mean. Uh, Hive jobs, I think uh, there maybe you can just filter it out with the hive. So I don't know, maybe uh, here we cannot uh, uh, filter it out with, but but normally any MapReduce job which is running more than few days that you can get from here. So iPhone list, then uh, app state, Okay, this should be running, but I'm just taking one finished, how this uh, looks like. And uh, you have, you can again go to this, once you get this application ID, you will get a uh, complete, uh, did, I mean the detailed uh, view, okay, when it started, etc. Okay, and uh, 
Oh, just uh, I mean, this is uh, we will uh, see a few more examples and exercises, but just to try to uh, add these uh, tools. I think uh, most of the people are not yet uh, started practicing. I think only the uh, few, very few people only ap approached me when they had some issues. So the practice is very important. So do practice, install it, and uh, do the in integration because just listening the class may not uh, work so you have to do the hands-on and then whenever you have some issues just you can discuss in the forum also maybe i will i'll just uh, uh, open the bridge like just 30 minutes before from the normal 30 or 45 minutes before then uh, people who can join and uh, discuss their uh, issues maybe before starting our uh, normal training schedule okay so please do practice and uh, try to build uh, the concept and understanding so how the things are working in a very high level then you can build on top of that so first thing you need to do is you should know how to do the installation so even if you are doing then you try to understand how the installation is working in backend so what are the things it's happening then only you should be able to troubleshoot so for each and every components logs will be generated in backend slash var log if you go to the slash var log directory then there will be a log corresponding to each and every server i will be explaining that in detail but while you are doing this cloudera manager installation and the basic cdh installation you can uh, get that details so build the cluster and then uh, because uh, along with the uh, session I mean, uh, that week you need to practice at least just uh, spend uh, 30, 40 uh, minutes per day and do practice. Okay. Uh, so then you can, yeah. What are the location of the log files, you know? Shigishu. Yeah, well, slash var log mainly. Uh, under and slash var log normal Unix directory, if you go there. Slash TMP? Yeah. No, under slash TMP and all uh, log, most of the logs are available under slash var log. Okay. 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 And one high yeah. log as high high log as well. Yeah, slash var. Yeah, you have to go to the host where this high service is running. Okay. Var log. Sorry. These slash logs will var. be available only on master one or all the nodes. No, no wherever the service is running say for example so you have may not choose master for this uh, hdfs name node right then in that case you have to go to find out the host say for example the secondary name node has some issue so you have to go to the master too and go to the directory so i will show you the in detail how this log how to get that log file but by default if you go to slash var log you can see this information like cloudera server agent hdfs map reduce yarn hcat log log hive log etc available on this master one because we install hive hcat etc on that machine so if you are installing on some other host we will have the log files available there okay so at, at least try to practice maybe if you have done once again do try the installation in a multiple way because one time installation may not be sufficient because maybe a post to the installation you will not remember what are the steps you have done so two or three whatever how many times you can do do that installation so once it's installed then you can start exploring different different things available say for example if you just did the hive so not only the uh, class topic so you can just go beyond that and get as much as possible okay so practice is very important rather than uh, uh, reading theory or, or anything so if you're interested you can you have option to uh, do more on this so if you have any uh, questions or if you are facing any challenges let me know you can uh, post it in the group so Prasad and Prashant is already uh, did, uh, did that installation. So I think uh, so they are keep posting. So others also please do. Okay. So if you have any challenges, let me know. So you can message me or uh, email me. So do the installation multiple times. Otherwise, it won't uh, be there in memory. Okay. 
and uh, we will uh, see that HDFS and uh, because we have not yet uh, covered that how these things works in backend uh, we will do that in the uh, maybe tomorrow okay so I'll, I'll just open this bridge just uh, uh, at maybe before uh, somewhere near to five o'clock so at least 30 minutes you can discuss the issues and uh, uh, those things before starting the class thank you Shigish. thank you very much really so, yeah we'll do practice because uh, again just listening class uh, definitely won't work so do yeah. practice and uh, read a lot so and also we can discuss in the forum also whatever the uh, i mean problem you have during the installation okay so we will uh, wind up for now and uh, continue uh, tomorrow thanks Ish. thank you so yeah. much okay yeah yeah Bye.